Joining us here at ASCO 2013 is Monica Morrow, MD. She is from the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City, where she serves as the Chief of Breast Service, Department of Surgery, and Burnett Winfor Chair of Clinical Oncology. That all makes you a busy woman. <laughs> yes, it does. You're here to talk about management of the axillary lymph nodes. This is kind of a hot topic now. It is. We've entered the era of axillary confusion, I think. After a hundred years of always dissecting the axilla, we realized that for women who had no involvement of their axillary lymph nodes, this did them no good. And sentinel node biopsy was developed as a staging technique, which has been widely accepted in clinical practice for node negative women. But once cancer cells were found in the sentinel nodes, axillary dissection was standard practice until about two years ago when the American College of Surgeons Z11 clinical trial showed that for women who were undergoing breast conserving surgery with whole breast radiation, had clinically negative lymph nodes, and were found to have metastasis to one or two sentinel nodes, that removing the axillary nodes did not contribute to survival and that the likelihood of cancer recurrence in the axilla with no further axillary treatment was extremely low, 0.9% over a six-year follow-up period. Now, that was very difficult for many people to accept, and one of the big criticisms of that study was, oh, the women must have been a very highly selected, favorable population of breast cancer patients, and that these findings don't really apply to everyone. So at Memorial Sloan Kettering, we started a prospective study where we took consecutive women who met the Z11 eligibility criteria and asked the simple question, how often can we avoid axillary dissection and can we predict who will end up needing axillary dissection? And what we found in results that we presented at the Society of Surgical Oncology in 2013 was that in 296 consecutive patients, we avoided axillary dissection in 84%, a huge saving in morbidity, and that things that people were worried about, like young patient age, lack of the estrogen receptor, HER2 overexpression, were not predictors of having three or more involved axillary nodes and needing axillary dissection. So that was one thing that told us that the Z11 results, in fact, do apply to most women with breast cancer. Here at ASCO this year, we heard the results of the AMAROS trial, which was a study that took the same population of women with T1 and T2 node-negative tumors who were found to have metastasis to the sentinel node and randomized them to completion axillary dissection or radiation of the axilla. And that study showed no difference in survival outcomes between the groups and again, an extremely low rate of recurrence in the women who had axillary radiation about 1%. The interesting finding from that study was that the morbidity of axillary radiation was significantly lower than axillary dissection. Particularly, there was less lymphedema, which is a complication that women really fear. So now we're in the interesting position of, we know we don't need to do axillary dissection in everyone, and I think that's important. People who are still doing that really are subjecting their patients to unnecessary morbidity. The AMAROS study included women undergoing mastectomy, which the American College of Surgeons trial did not. So this tells us that this approach works in women who are having mastectomy who get axillary radiation as well, which is a new finding. But the area where we still have some uncertainty is AMAROS radiated everyone's axilla, the Z11 study did not, and they came up with the same results. So what to do with that patient group is really the question that's remaining. So is it uncertainty? You say there's also confusion out there. Well, I think there's confusion because these trials took the same groups of patients, slightly different approaches, and all ended up with a good outcome. So how do you pick what's best for your individual patient? And the way I look at that right now is either axillary radiation or doing nothing but removing the sentinel node is less morbid than axillary dissection. So regardless of which one you choose, you'll get a good outcome and you're doing something better for your patient. I think what we need to study further is most women probably don't need axillary radiation either. How can we identify the subset who actually do? And I think that's a question that we need to work on. So clear evidence of a new standard of care for these patients would be what? 
Well, I think there already is a clear evidence of a new standard of care. We have several prospective randomized trials, the two I outlined, the International Breast Cancer Study Group of micrometastases randomized to axillary dissection versus sentinel node biopsy only. Again, no difference in outcomes. So I think that in today's world where we're using multimodality therapy for women with positive nodes, you don't need to do as big a surgery as you needed to do 40 years ago when surgery was the only method of treatment that we had. So I think the new standard of care is all women with involved axillary nodes do not require axillary dissection. Nicely done, Dr. Morrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Monica Morrow, MD from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City.